A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. No one can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. Today is my second last episode of Ask Father D. As you may be aware, uh, our churches are, are beginning its uh, reopening stages. And so uh, as the churches begin to open, I won't have time to answer all these questions that have been coming in. So I'd like to thank everyone for all their questions that, that they've sent me. And this last uh, section, this last um, last episode will actually be a little bit longer. So stay tuned and uh, stay tuned for our episode of Ask Father D. Welcome to another episode of Ask Father D. Um, let us begin with a prayer. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, we ask you to send your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Truth, in our hearts, and to enlighten and inflame us to love you and to love our neighbor. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, my dear friends, this is going to be my second last uh, episode of Ask Father D, so it's going to be a little bit longer. So please bear with me and please, the topics that I have are very controversial and that uh, you'll probably want to stay uh, and listen to the whole way through. Um, but uh, the last episode, the next episode, will actually be more along the lines of the reopening of the church uh, churches and especially here at St. Monica's, um, how parishioners are supposed to approach um, when coming up for communion, uh, little protocols and guidelines that are given from the Archdiocese of Toronto. I will be conveying it. So do tune into that one also. It is important. Uh, but this one is also important. This question that we have actually comes to us anonymously and it's actually a very big questions. There's actually three questions that are asked and uh, I'd like to, um, so the first question I'd like to, uh, I'd like to read you the questions first and then I'll go one question at, at a time. So the first question is, can I support abortion and LGBT? I think they mean LGBTQ and still be considered a good Catholic. As I see many modern priests, just like Father James Martin, that started to openly support LGBTQ movement and Planned Parenthood, and he still is one of Pope Francis's right-hand man. That's the first question. The second one is, why can't the Catholic moral teaching evolve with times? And the third question is, do you think orthodoxy in moral and dogmatic theology still is relevant in this time and age? Very good. So I want to preface and start um, by, by giving you an image, a couple images. And these images, though, uh, last, uh, last Sunday, uh, or well, when you're, when you're seeing it, it's going to be two Sundays ago, uh, Holy Tr it was Holy Trinity on June the 7th. And uh, as we celebrated that Holy Trinity, um, uh, Archbishop... Um, Archbishop 
Carlo Maria Vigano, Vigano had written a letter to President Donald Trump. And uh, in it, I don't know if you know who uh, Cardinal Maria Vigano is, but he was uh, he was the former Apostolic Nuncio of uh, America. And um, and uh, he prior to that, he was the one that um, the uh, that uh, not whistleblown, but he was in charge, and he found the uh, the scandal that was happening in the uh, the uh, Vatican Bank and the corruption there and he's the one that brought it to light and 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 kind of brought it to light and showed showed not only the world but also the vatican what was going on um so in any case this is what he 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 writes and i want you to keep in mind the imagery so he starts off um you know dating at june 7 2020 holy trinity sunday and he writes this in english right not not in latin not in italian but in English to the president. So it must be very important for, for him to, tell, to, to give it to the president this way. And he says, Mr. President, in recent months, we have been witnessing the formation of two opposing sides that I w- would call biblical, the children of light and the children of darkness. Now, I'm not going to read every single thing. I'm just going to give you excerpts and you can look it up uh, yourself and uh, and uh, read the whole thing if you wish uh, then I believe it's the um, the third paragraph beginning of the third paragraph now so the first one was the beginning of the of the letter and the, in society mr. president these two opposing realities coexist as eternal enemies just as God and Satan are eternal enemies and then he continues and this is uh, by the uh, end of the fourth paragraph. Hidden behind these acts of vandalism and violence. So he's talking about uh, what's going on in the States. And, and, and you, know, you know, the um, uh, um, a, 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 with the um, protests on the streets and all these things. And how there might be few that are, are causing and instigating uh, like uh, acts of vandalism and stuff like that. So hidden behind these acts of vandalism and violence, there are those who hope to profit. So those who hope, not everyone, but those who hope to profit from the disillusion, uh, the social order, so as to build a world without freedom. Salve et coagula, as the Messianic adage teaches. I'm going to come back to that. Salve et coagula. And then finally... Uh, The last quote I want to quote is his second to last paragraph. He writes, It is necessary that the good, the children of light, come together and make their voices heard. What more effective way is there to do this, Mr. President, than by prayer, asking the Lord to protect you, the United States, and all of humanity from this enormous attack of the enemy. Now, I read you portions of these letters to give you a couple image images to preface before I start to answer those questions because I think it's really important that we understand what's going on and we understand that there is a battle between good and evil there is that imagery between the children of light and the children of darkness and that I can't be a child of the light and say I'm a child of the darkness too they're opposing they're enemies they're opposing one another um and so the first imagery is that. The second one is a, is really subtle. Uh, it's, the, it, it's the words in Latin that he throws in there, solve et coagula, um, which is a, a messianic, like the ma- Freemasonry uh, adage teaches, right? So if you don't know what that refers to, that refers to um, this image here. I'm going to put it right there okay I'm going to stop that image because it's not a pretty image at all Um, but when I make reference to it uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about it and that that's actually the deity uh, Baphomet Um, it's like satanic Um, however 
it, it comes from the Knights of Templar, and uh, the Knights of Templar were also affiliated with the Freemasonry. And um, <clears throat> and so, uh, if you really notice, and I'll, I'll show you, I'll blow up the, the arms of uh, Baphomet. Uh, if you look at it, it says um, Solve on one arm going up Solve, and on the other arm going down, it says Coagula. And so solve is like to dissolve, to, to like, to, to loosen, to loosen. And in the process of loosening it, then coagul coagula, which is like to coagulate, to bring together, but to bring together something that is new. Um, so they want to transform whatever it is into something new. But in order to transform it, they, they break it down. Uh, so it's a, so they, uh, they break down like um, society. You know, very much like um, like uh, Karl Marx, right? The, the, uh, there's an upheaval that happens and it breaks down uh, the actual order of things. And then there's a new order that re re resurfaces, but not necessarily a good and just order. Um, and, uh, and this is what it's uh, making reference to. Um, so it's really... The imagery that he's giving to Donald Trump is basically good versus evil, right? And that um, to watch out um, uh, because what is trying to um, dissolve what is there is also trying to bring about something new, um, but might not be the best for humanity, for the world. Um, I always think of uh, the word diabolic. <laughs> I heard uh, Fulton Sheen talk about the word diabolic, which the the etymology of the word really means to tear apart. And so, whenever there's there's communities that are torn apart, there's there's uh, uh, people that are torn apart, and there's fighting in house, fighting in the country, fighting there and fighting there, and they're torn apart. It's diabolic. It's the work of the devil. It's not the work of the Holy Spirit that unites, that gives us peace that gives us joy, that gives us love. It's the opposite, the opposite. And that's why at the very beginning, we prayed for the Holy Spirit to, to come into our hearts to enlighten it with truth and to enlighten our, inflame our hearts with that. Because the Holy Spirit gives us, is the spirit of truth, of joy, of peace. Anyways, those are the two images I wanted to preface before I even started the uh, to tackle the question because um, the question really does have to do with battling between good and evil. And you can't say that I am a child of light and I'm a child of darkness. Uh, they're diametrically opposed. So when uh, the question is asked, um, can you support abortion and LGBTQ and still be considered a good Catholic? Um, and uh, this person is talking about Father James Martin. Uh, whom I suppose stated openly that he supported the LGBT movement and Planned Parenthood. So um, whether it means the lifestyle or whether it means you're supporting um, each person individually by uh, loving them. Like we are called to hate the sinful action, but love the sinner. And so when we think about it, um, I know many people might talk and, and say, well, Father Damien, I have um, an aunt, I have a sister, I have a friend, I have a brother, etc., who uh, maybe uh, they do believe in abortion or they've had one or they, they are part of the LGBTQ community. Uh, does that mean that I, I don't have to, because if I... Does that mean I don't have to love them? Or does that mean I, I'm no longer their friends or I don't have to talk to them? And the reality is no, by no means. It doesn't mean that we separate ourselves from them uh, and that we don't, um, you know, we don't talk to them, we don't care for them, we don't pray for them, uh, we don't love them. And I think that's the greatest fallacy is to think that um, we don't have to accept one's way of living but we can still love that person and the greatest example would be um, a parent 
you know when someone when a child does something wrong or even if a child's in prison you know all those uh all those uh prisoners they have mothers they have fathers they have brothers and sisters they have loved ones who love them still even though they don't don't agree with the action and so it almost seems like a great fallacy to think you need, in order for you to accept and love someone, you need to accept and love what they did or what they do. Um, case in point, <clears throat> not to bring up a whole bunch of things with uh, George Floyd, but you know, um, he was unjustly killed. And that's a matter of fact. Um, and the whole world uh, mourns for, for that injustice that happened. But does it mean that you support his lifestyle or his previous lifestyle and the things that he's done? He's done in the past, right? Uh, and I think if you do the investigation, you see um, his past. Does that mean that you supporting him uh, and, and loving him when he was unjustly killed? Does that mean you also support his entire past, right? And I think it's a fallacy to think that. Because you care for a person, you actually are supporting their actions. And so um, that's where the catechism is very clear in terms of um, we judge actions, right? And so even for myself as a priest, uh, we can only judge actions. And we're called to judge actions, but we can't condemn a person or, or judge the person because we don't know everything about it. And so um, I would say, no, it doesn't mean that you stop loving that person because they have a, a different set of ideas from yourself or they don't agree with what you agree with or they're diametrically opposed. Uh, just like I said, I have a friend that's an atheist. He doesn't believe in God. That's a diametrically opposed uh, ideology. I believe in God. I believe in the Trinity. He does not believe in the Trinity. Does that mean then that we can't be friends? Does that mean that we can't wish the best for one another? That we, we can't go on a human level for a human virtue for us to grow? No, it doesn't. Um, that would beg the question. If you feel that you're the person that would say, well, I'm going to stop being your friend because you believe the opposite I believe, then, um, then you're really equating the action and the person together. And there's always room that the person can change. The person can grow in holiness. There's always room for, for that. The actions are actions that are done and they become the past. And we can always change and move to become saints. And so, um, the distinction is between a movement or the individual person, right? So, um... I think I'll tackle the abortion one first because, uh, well, in any case, what is it that the Catholic Church teaches in terms of all of these, right? And then can I go against what the Catholic Church teaches and still say that I'm a good Catholic? So it would be almost like, you know, if you were pro-abortion, um, you know, if you were pro-abortion and you actually uh, went to pro-life um, uh, you know, uh, pro-life march for life, and you walked alongside with the with the pro-lifers, and you said, "I support pro-life." Um, you really don't by supporting abortion, right? So, can you say then that you're either you you are a, a true pro-abortion, or you, can you say that you're a true true um, pro-lifer? And in fact. When you're kind of supporting both, you're kind of in the middle. You have no ground to stand on. Uh, I forgot that movie, um, but it's a quote that the movie uses. You either stand for something or fall for everything. Um, I think it was from this movie called Sucker Punch, but he's quoting it from an author. Um, so you either stand for something or you fall for everything. Uh, so basically, you can't be... If there's two diametrically opposed uh, viewpoints and you don't want to 
you know, you don't want to pick a side. You stand in the center and say, I believe in both. You really don't make any sense because they're both diametrically opposed. You either believe that abortion is good, which means the killing of life, or that pro-life is good, which means you don't want the killing of, 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 um, of babies. So for us, the Catholic Church teaches um, why abortion is a sin, right? And why, why, what, what it's against, right? And it's against the fifth commandment. And so if you hold that we value life as sacred from the moment of conception to the mo moment of natural death, then to hold an opposing view, all right, a, a view that is diametrically opposed, then can you really say that you hold um, that, uh, you know, life is sacred, right? So can I say life is sacred and I believe in killing someone? So if you were to hold those things and support them, um, then, uh, you know, how can you be considered a good Catholic? In fact, I would, I would beg to differ that you would not be a person of integrity because you you say you believe one thing, but you act out a different thing. And that's not integrity. That's something else, right? Um, and so to be an integral person, it's like a person that believes in abortion and doesn't hold the Catholic view and doesn't, you know, says, well, that church believes in it, believes in pro-life against abortion. So I'm not going to be part of that. That's a person of integrity. I mean, even though they might be misguided or even though they might feel they're right, that is at least a person of integrity meaning that they believe in that view and they hold it true and they they stand to it but you can't be on both both sides and in fact the scripture i read with the pre-intro was um matthew's uh gospel where jesus says no one can be a servant of two masters you know the slave will either love one and hate the other you cannot serve both God and wealth. And so you can't have two opposing, diametrically opposed views and hold them both to be true at the same time. That is a logical fallacy. It just really, it really is. Um, and so I would say to the person that, no, you can't be considered a good Catholic. Uh, uh, you, you, I don't even know, you can't, I would say, I would even go even further to say that you wouldn't even be a person of integrity. Um, because if you do believe in it, then yeah, uh, that's your right to believe in it. No one's going to stop you from believing in it. Um, but uh, for me, I would say that um, if I don't believe in it, and I say I, I support it and believe it, I wouldn't be a person of integrity. Um, and in these days, you know, uh, I don't know if uh, our young people are being taught about human virtue and to become people of integrity. Um, and, and that's what it really means to be a good character. Um, because your views can change eventually, but you can't hold both opposing views. Um, you can't hold both a both opposing views uh, at the same time. Um, you know, it's sort of like the friend that says, uh, you know, you ask a friend uh, a question. You're 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 debating with another person, and you ask a friend, a, a third party, and the person turns to you, and goes, well, "Yeah, you're right," and then turns to the other, person, "Yeah, it's your right." The person didn't make a stand. The person didn't even say a thing. Um, and in doing so, what is he really saying? Because if my view is op opposite to your view, and, and there's no middle ground, then then how how can I believe in both? Um, for me, logically, I still can't even fathom uh, believing in something that is diametrically opposed to what I believe, and then be considered um, authentic. I guess authentic and and. and in t a, a person of integrity, um, you know? And so uh, if I were, I, I'm not gonna talk about Father Mar James Martin because I don't really know him and I don't want to um, gossip by detraction, but like if I was to believe 
in the LGBTQ movement. I'm not talking about supporting individuals and journeying with them and praying for them and loving them and you know showing them how to how to get to God. But I'm talking about the actual ideology and the movement of the LGBTQ and Planned Parenthood who uh, supports abortion. Um, if I was to support that and also call myself a Catholic priest, knowing that what the Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches and knowing what the Church teaches, then I can't really be considered a good Catholic, faithful Catholic priest, can I? You know, it's, it's, it's very funny. I was, um, you, many of you know I do illusions, and I was actually looking at uh, Penn and Teller, and, um, <clears throat> and then I was looking at Penn more specifically, and then I saw that he had an interview with um, Pierce Morgan, and it was right around the time, uh, this was an older video, but it was around the time when Pope Benedict had uh, retired and stepped down from the papacy. And Pierce Morgan was, you know, griping and talking about how, how can the Pope do that and all, all this stuff. And so here's a section of that clip. I think I may be someone who believes in the Pope's position more than most Catholics. Uh, I really take people at their word. And it seems like uh, all the cynicism and all the um, who we're going to get in and modernizing, there's not supposed to be modernizing. It's supposed to be the word of God. And I know it's only when he's speaking at cathedrals, not all the time. But um, I really believe that if people believe, I don't know how they can have opinions on the Catholic but Church. You, have you to call believe. yourself a Catholic. Right. Don't you follow everything? This is this is this is great. What sides you're picking here? I would say on my side that if you have have someone who is a conduit to God and is speaking God's word, even if you can't understand exactly what God's plan is, even if you do see suffering that you consider uh, unacceptable or any suffering is unacceptable, that still doesn't mean you get to vote on what God actually believes. They pray, they study but it's what their they're interpretation. Saying. Of what? Well, God but, would but it's believe. their interpretation of somebody who is at times divine. I don't, I don't remember reading Jesus Christ saying you cannot use condoms to prevent disease. But that's all. That's I don't remember him saying priests, Catholic priests, can't get married. But but I don't remember him saying divorced Catholics can't exactly. remarry in a church. But that's or that all. Female priests can't be ordained. That's so all. None of these things have actually come from Jesus Absolutely. Christ's own that's, mouth. But now you're talking Martin Luther. I mean, that was Martin Luther saying that an individual, I don't think he actually mentioned you by name, but an individual <laughs> could interpret the Bible themselves. The idea, as I understand that of the Catholic Church, is that it's not interpreting the Bible yourself. You have somebody who is actually able mm -hmm. to do that. And once you have somebody that is telling you, we are interpreting God for you, it seems like you either agree or you don't. Because if you hold at the very first start that Jesus has the authority and pass it on to Peter and Peter did the same, then logically it follows that you have to hold that all the way through or else your whole ideology doesn't have anything to stand on. And I, I think that's the problem is the problem is we live in a, rep, um, a, a society that that's very, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, a relativistic society where everything's relative, right? And and that uh, we don't want to offend anyone and that what you say is right, what I say is right. Um, but that doesn't make logical sense um, because no one wants to really debate because they get heated, they start to argue. So you can either be right or wrong, but in today's world, you can't be either or, you have to be... Um, tolerant and you have to be um, believing that everything what that person says is true but that begs the question does a person who holds abortion do they hold my belief as true or the uh, movement to LGBTQ do they hold that the natural definition of marriage is true um, you know, that's the question that's begged because um, if they do, then it doesn't seem like they're being authentic to their movement or authentic to their own, um, their own convictions.
Um, so that's the one thing I would I would pose that um, if I was a priest and I, I I supported the LGBTQ movement against what the Catholic Church teaches and also supported Planned Parenthood, then how could I in good conscience call myself a good Catholic priest, a faithful Catholic priest? I couldn't. Um, so that answers that question. And I know I'm going on for a long period of time, but here's the second question. Why can't the Catholic moral teaching evolve with times? And uh, I want to think maybe perhaps what the person is asking is, uh, why can't the Catholic Church Church's moral teaching change to what modern times deems as okay? It is founded, the moral teachings are founded on uh, natural law and on divine law. So uh, lots of it's handed down by Christ himself, uh, the moral teachings of Christ in the gospel, and also, um, also a lot of it has to do with uh, just universal moral norms um, that, that, that we can come to know by reason alone. Um, you know, you don't need, um, you don't need the revelation of the Ten Commandments to come to know the Ten Commandments. Uh, we can come to know that. In fact, if I, if I come, come at you with a knife to try to kill you, you're going to say that's wrong, right? If I, um, if I steal some from steal something from you, you're going to say that's wrong. Uh, that's what's known as a universal moral norm. That without, without the light of the gospel or without the the revelation of of uh, scripture, human beings can come to know. That's what that's what scripture talks about. The law is written in the hearts of human beings, right? Um, because there are universal moral norms across the board, and that's why. There are some people that will argue the fact that, okay, when we're talking about um, people going to heaven, they'll talk about, okay, there's this, um, there's this uh, group of indigenous people out somewhere, like maybe in Papua New Guinea or whatever. They've never, they're not Christians. They've never known anything. But yet, when they live their life, they're living as though, Christ, as though they're, they're Christians. You know, they're loving, they're caring, they share, they do all these things. Well, those are universal moral norms that they're coming to. That's also in Scripture. Not, it's not opposed to Scripture. It's not diametrically opposed to Scripture. It comes in Scripture, and that's what universal moral norms are. But in any case, um, the moral teachings don't change because they're, if you will, they're timeless with God. And if God has deemed it and says it, uh, going back to Penn, um, what he had uh, stated to Pierce Morgan, then we, we kind of we we do hold it. We ha we kind of have to hold it, and the church holds to those things. Do you think orthodoxy and moral and dogmatic theology still is still relevant in this time and age? Uh, I do think so. I do very much think and hold that orthodoxy is the right way of thinking. Thinking ortho is straight straight uh doxy is uh thought uh in morality and in um dogmatic theology uh still is it still relevant in in today's age of course it is it's relevant throughout all of time how we're supposed to act properly uh when we don't act properly we get a degenerate nation we get uh, anarchy we get upheaval we get all these things I mean, you turn on the news and you see uh, criminals. Uh, I saw I saw a post someone wrote um, saying um, because there was a shooting uh, that was close by just the other day. Um, uh, why do you, why why would someone settle an argument by pulling a gun? Well, the thing they need to understand is a criminal doesn't care about the law, right? A, a criminal is devoid of morality. Right and 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 devoid of right morality, um, a right way of thinking. In fact, they have a different. They might say they have a moral in terms of a code of conduct between thieves and criminals, but it's not the right one because it's it's hurting innocent people. It's it's going against um, it's going against at least Christian values and even societal values. 
because no one, no one says that it's right. So um, if someone's gunned down, we don't say, oh, well, they deserve it. Of course not. Um, so we can see by, by the news, we can see by the media, we can see by what's going on in the world that the world does still need a sense of orthodoxy in morals. Uh, and when you when you lose that, when a society loses it, you know, we, we have to continue to pray because when a society loses it, it becomes chaotic. You know, it's, it's as if you're living in a criminal state. It's a, so for us, um, or for me, I, I would tell you that, yes, moral uh, orthodoxy and morals and uh, orthodoxy and dogmatic theology is still relevant. Uh, dogmatic theology would mean um, our study of God um so um yeah so i hope those answer your questions uh and i know that it's very controversial and people will always want to you know write in the write uh, comments and stuff like that and, um just ask yourself those questions the same thing like uh if i truly believe in the catholic church um i might not understand everything or understand how they came to the conclusion so go do the research right go go on the internet go look up uh, vatican councils go look up the research and find out why they teach what they teach and then make an informed decision but you can't just be part of it and then be against it at the same time so thank you very much and if you um uh don't forget to well do not ask any more questions because this is my second last and i'm very sorry there were like over 74 different questions so i never got to a lot of them there's still quite a few um that are have not been answered um but we will be seeing you at mass um very shortly so thank you and god bless